Tonight on Q2, vandals strike a Southside Billings church. Once again, forcing parishioners to pick up the pieces and wonder why this keeps happening. It was devastating. I couldn't um, stop crying last night thinking about it. Plus, a chicken filled ribbon cutting. Eat more chicken! New Chick fil A will open its doors tomorrow morning and we'll let you know everything you need to know. And transportation troubles. We're very um, nervous about what's ahead and uh, want to make sure that we have a good plan for that. The population boom wreaking havoc on Montana roadways. They need to just make it a little bit bigger, I guess. I don't know the roads. The MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, this is the MTN 530 News. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Andrea Lutz. A Billings Catholic Church ravaged as precious and historic religious artifacts are stolen and then the church vandalized. Longtime parishioners of Mary Queen of Peace Church are now asking why someone would cause so much damage. Uh, Alina Howder has the story. What used to be a glass door here at Mary Queen of Peace Parish is now all boarded up. Thieves broke in sometime Monday night, leaving parishioners frustrated. And sadly, this isn't the first time this building has been vandalized. I've prayed in front of her image and her shrine in so many capacities with, with adoration and with joy and, and grief and love. And, and to have that, have this happen to her, it just... It hurts. Amy Aguirre has been a part of the Catholic community in Billings her entire life. Our roots go all the way to the beginning here in Billings. So it, it is family. It's my church family. So when she heard her church had been vandalized, she was devastated. This one was special for me, though, because when I look at her, I see my ancestors. I see my grandpa and my grandma who help build our church community. Father Jose Marquez was the first to find the destruction Tuesday morning. He believes multiple suspects used this rock to break in. This was the only thing that was broken into um, and, and, and they it seemed like they went out through the front door taking the statues out. He immediately called police. Three statues were stolen along with paintings. Police say the items were worth about $8,300. I just showed them where they have empty, empty pedestals where these statues were. And uh, also on the walls, there were these, where these, um, pictures were. And then there's the vandalism. Graffiti like this was written on the walls. The front door shattered. Overall, the damage is estimated at about $4,000. A GoFundMe has been set up to help pay for repairs. And sadly, this isn't the first time something like this has happened. The ones I'm aware of uh, that have been quite obvious, at least three within the last couple of years. Bill Contreras is Amy's father. While he and his daughter are frustrated, they say forgiveness is key. If you're watching this, you know, you know you're forgiven. You know, we just hope that, you know, you find it yourselves to bring whatever you still have back. You know, no questions asked. In Billings, Alina Howder, MTN News. Some nervous moments this afternoon at a Billings Mobile Home Park, the scene of a standoff. Police, sheriff's deputies, and U.S. Marshals all converging on a home in the Golden Meadows Mobile Home Park. Neighbors nearby told me that police told them there was a gunman inside a home and asked them to leave the area. Law enforcement with long guns, dogs, and a drone could be seen. Police say it was all part of a joint operation to make what they called a high-risk arrest. Negotiators eventually talked two suspects out peacefully, and they were arrested on out-of-state warrants. Construction on the Billings West End became a perfect opportunity for some thieves to seize the day. They got away with some heavy machinery worth thousands of dollars in the middle of the night from two separate work sites. Charlie Kleps has the details. Imagine showing up to your work site and a skid steer just like this one had completely vanished overnight. That was the reality for one excavating company here in Billings, and unfortunately, they aren't the only ones. Jumped in the skid steer, they cut the GPS off of the skid steer, and then drove it right up onto the trailer and, and took off. It was the last thing the employees of Castle Rock Excavating expected when they arrived at work on Tuesday. Their skids are gone in an apparent robbery. Without that piece of machinery, we're not able to, to do some of our work, so we have to move machinery from another project here. It's an unusual crime, but not completely unheard of. That's where it was. They just wheeled it right out of here and 
drove it onto the street, we think, and put it on a trailer and took off. Sean Nelson has been building homes in Billings for 20 years. Around Thanksgiving, he had his skid steer stolen off of a work site near Elder Grove School. That skid steer, when it goes missing for me or someone else, represents jobs for many other people. Both men think they know what's coming next. They've stole it to either part it out um, and sell it piece by piece or sell it. Because it's just not something you would steal and then drive around town and use it locally. Somebody would catch up to you. It's not that big of a community. A community they never really expected this to happen in. It is crazy that crime's gotten that bad that, you know, they're, they're, they have enough guts to come into a subdivision like this. We can replace the machine, but it'd be nice to keep them from stealing from everybody. In Billings, Charlie Kleps, MTN News. Traffic could become a nightmare in the area of King and 24th Street West as we get ready for the grand opening of Chick-fil-A. And we know now that you have some questions about what to expect. Tonight, our Casey Conlin is working to get your answers about what the traffic might look like. At 6.30 a.m. tomorrow, these doors and these drive through lanes will open for business at Billings First Chick-fil-A. Now, I don't mean to burst anyone's bubble, but if you are first in line tomorrow, you technically won't be the first customers inside the building. Chick-fil-A welcomes some community leaders to sample the goods today. Eat more chicken! If you do plan to come down tomorrow, pay attention because there's a very specific plan you'll need to follow. I think our request for the public, you know, be patient, try to try to operate under the plan. City engineer Mac Fogelsong knows Thursday is going to be a busy one near 24th and King. I think there's going to be some challenges and some some things in life you just you just have to uh, attack as they come. But that doesn't mean Fogelsong and Chick-fil-A's team of engineers are just winging this. Here is tomorrow's plan. The first thing you need to know is that all customers dine in and drive through are supposed to enter at King and 26th. That's at this stoplight right here with Rocky Mountain Bank on the northeast corner of the intersection. Now, I know what you're thinking. The restaurant entrance is closer to 24th, so I'll just go in that way. But there will be reminders in every direction telling you not to do that. There's going to be some advanced uh, message boards that said, hey, use King Avenue, and that, that allows the traffic to kind of stack on, on site. Now, once you get into the shopping center, you'll make your first right just past the bank. As you go down that road, you'll reach one of two Billings police officers here to help manage things. This officer here will ask you dine in or drive through. Now, if it's dine in, you go to this stop sign here, take a left, go toward the restaurant, and good luck finding a parking spot. If it's drive through, your line starts here, down these aisles of the Walmart parking lot. Chick-fil-A worked it out with Walmart to use these two easternmost aisles as a queue because they know what tomorrow can look like. There's Jessica. This is the Chick-fil-A opening in Missoula back in November. And Billings residents will remember another fast food frenzy when Sonic opened in the Heights on March 14, 2011, as traffic was backed up more than a half a mile down Main Street at one point. <laughs> Chick-fil-A has requested police help through January 28th. After that, Vogelsong hopes he'll be able to move on. It has a lot of press right now, but you know, after it's operating and, and that it should kind of be back to the normal condition and, uh, and should work. We'll see just how popular this chicken is. In Billings, Casey Conlon, MTN News. A new report is out tonight identifying the toll Montana's population growth is taking on our Montana highways. Our Kelsey Marison is taking a closer look at what that means for drivers here in Yellowstone County. According to that report, Montana's highways move $82 million in goods annually. So maintaining our transportation system is crucial for our state's economy. We're checking in with travelers and transportation officials to see what problems everyday drivers face and how they will be fixed in the future. If you live in Montana's largest city, you can probably relate. Sometimes it's bumper to bumper. Traffic troubles and headaches on the highway that seem never ending. I think that construction has been going on since I moved back in April, I think. And as Montana's population continues to grow, so do those problems. At the end of the day, we've got some uh, pretty big issues to solve. A new report out from the National Transportation Research Nonprofit, or TRIP, is identifying the biggest transportation challenges facing our state. The report says 13% of all roads in Montana are in poor condition. In Billings, it's even worse, at 32%. And while Montana's population has grown by 22% since 
since the year 2000, vehicle travel has increased by 30 percent. There's been so much pressure with the population and the, and the vehicle counts growing too that we're, we're very nervous about what's ahead and uh, want to make sure that we have a good plan for that. Several infrastructure projects are already in the works to help alleviate traffic troubles. Here in Billings, that includes adding new lanes on I-90 and the Billings Bypass Project connecting the heights to Lockwood. This bridge over the Yellowstone is already complete, but the project won't be complete for a couple of years. Montana currently spends upwards of $700 million a year on transportation projects using state and federal funding. We can't do it in a vacuum. We can't do what we do alone. Drivers like Marissa Hollins are excited for the changes to come. Anything to make driving a more enjoyable experience. Just crappy. In Billings, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. Well, still to come on the MTN 530 News here on Q2, record highs, alarming numbers come to light. When it comes to guns passing through Montana airports, we'll break down the data next. And all in the family, MSUB is off to their hottest start in years. And one of the biggest reasons why, well, the Tot Twins. We'll meet our Athletes of the Week in just a bit. The MTN 530 News continues right after this.